Welcome to Senate Education, uh, Tuesday, February 15th, 1.33 p.m. Uh, welcome to what I think is going to be a busy, productive week for Senate Education. We are going to start today by looking at a draft letter uh, that was uh, worked on by our Ledge Council, Mr. Demaray, but uh, this is a um, this is new language that I think many have probably seen in emails or talked to people about uh, as it relates to uh, funding for English language learners. And so I'll give everyone a second to just pull it up <clears throat> if they have not yet had a chance to take a look at it on our website. Uh, and I'm wondering if you're comfortable uh, with this, I'd like to actually have um, Senator Perslick say a few words about uh, some of the work from that you've done to sort of get us to this point. I don't know if that's something you'd like to do or um, it would, it'd probably be helpful to, to, to all of us, but I, I didn't give you a heads up, so. Um, Feel free to pretend that your computer doesn't work. <laughs> no, um, it, I missed the, your little preamble. I assume you're talking about the people waiting? Um, yeah, I'm talking about the people waiting. And so you and Senator Hardy, uh, basically, when we were in what looked like uh, a position where we would have to sort of rethink the direction that we we might go in, you were great enough to take the lead and work with Senator Hardy to get um, get us to this stage. And so I'm wondering if you might just say a few words uh, before we have we turn it over to Jim. Yeah, I think just briefly, we we on this committee heard a lot of from from the, the Chittenden County or the Burlington and Winooski school districts in particular who have a lot of ELL students. So this is extremely important to them. We also were getting kind of evolving information from AOE and Ledge Council and JFO on how all these numbers and things were gonna work. And you know, we're all on the same team, so to speak, that we wanted to do what was best for the ELL students. That was all our goal. And I don't think there was ever any disagreement that we people wanted to make sure that ELL students got the resources they needed. It was just a question of what's the best way to do it forward. But given the testimony we heard and the complications, uh, Talking with Senator Hardy, who spent a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on this issue, uh, we did think that just keeping with the weights was the way to go for now. Just doing all the all the same as as came out of the task force in uh, Dr. Colby's memo in January that that recalibrated based on some of the other things that we did. So it's that 2.49 weight, and just say okay, all all the different measures, sparsity, grade level, rurality, poverty, will all have weights and the weights will be based on the study. And we will, for the small schools, because the, the problem with the weights partly is that these very, the schools with very few ELL students, the weights didn't help them. And because of the equalized pupil, sometimes with all the equalized pupil going to the schools that had a lot of ELL students, they wouldn't see really any benefit for the 10 ELL students they had. So the proposal is to do a block grant or mini block grants, or you could call them categorical grants maybe, that per, for those schools that just have one to 25 or 20, and then 25 to 50 or somewhere around there, they would just get a lump sum of money. Like if you have one to 25 ELL students, here's $30,000, because you're gonna need to hire somebody, you know, maybe just part-time. And then, but they would still get the weight. So they may or may not get some benefit from the weight, based on equalized pupil calculations, but at least they'll get a chunk of money so they can at least hire a part-time ELL instructor for the five students they have. But if they have more students, then they can get 50,000 or so. And then as they get more students, the weight should provide the taxing capacity that the school would need. And then our concern about making sure that things go well, and now we don't end up in 20 years where we're now, where the weights got out of whack and there wasn't really a connection to the outcomes that we would we would collect the data to see how things are going and work with the schools and AOE to, to make sure that 
we are seeing the outcomes of those students, whether they be poverty students, ELL students, special education students, separate from this, are are, are excelling because that's all our goal. And then right. moving from there. Senator Terenzini. Thank you. Uh, Senator Pershing, where, do, where would I find the latest um, tax implications per community so we could see if a school, if a district was, you know, in a little better shape or worse off in terms of the financials? Yeah, there is not a new one posted, I don't think, anywhere. I, I haven't looked at our full agenda for the week, so I don't know if we have um, Mr. James back in there, but if, if, if we have, he, my understanding is AOE has, Brad James has done the new tables and has done it different ways so that you can compare it. So we could maybe have him in, or maybe we could just post it. And it is just table that you can look by district. Is that something, uh, Chair Campion, we could ask Daphne maybe to track down? Yeah, are you okay, Senator Terenzini, if we uh, email it around, or would you that's, like to have yeah, him in? Is that fine. okay? No, no, that, yeah, that's fine. Just, just something to review. Hey, can I ask yep. a follow-up question? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I know we've, we've talked at length about this for weeks. I, I get it, and I'm sure we've talked about it, but can you refresh my memory? Is For a community that is being largely impacted financially, you know, not, you know, for sort of in a negative fashion, is, is there any mechanism in place to offset some of that tax increase that they're facing? And could you just explain that one more time? The, the goal from the, in the task force report and, and in what I think and speaking with Senator Hardy, what they're talking about in finance for the larger part is, is a roll in. So it would just be a, a slow change of the tax rates instead of like, if because some of the districts could see quite a big change. We don't want to have a position that we're, a situation where they have to like lay off teachers or you know go to the voters with a really huge increase so it'd be like over the next three to five years the these weights and grants would you know they're all all weights except for these little mini grants for ELL would be in place so as far as the there isn't an offsetting kind of like with Act 46 where we gave schools that merge some extra money it wouldn't be anything like that it would just feather in the burden or the benefit because it's also for a school that gets a lot of tax and capacity it's like they can't maybe take that all in in one year so it helps both sides to roll this in over time does that answer your question yeah it does i i appreciate it thank you and senator terenzini what we'll do is we'll uh We'll take a look at that. If you have additional questions, we'll absolutely have Mr. James in. If anybody else has additional questions, uh, I don't want anybody to, uh, to if anybody has reservations with the letter going forward, I'm more than happy to put uh, in the letter that there are some reservations from sen senators uh, given whatever that might be. So, so uh, Senator Chittenden. So I support the letter. I like where you've gone with this. Great work, Senator Perslick. Uh, I will say the fourth bullet on the first block, uh, I just wonder, uh, it says provide, you're, we're making the following ELL recommendations for your consideration and this dir is directed to the Senate Finance Committee. I'm, I'm just wondering, it, the fourth one says provide guidelines, support and basic program requirements for ELL programs to ensure that all school districts are operating high quality programs for ELL students. Everything else seems to make perfect sense to be in finance, but that fourth bullet, it seems like something that Senate education might want yeah. to uh, dig into further. I'm not saying take it out, but I'm just wondering if it fits within the context of everything else in this letter. This is the problem when you have ambitious students that read the memo ahead of time before Ledge Council takes us through it. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, if you don't mind, Senator Chin, if you could just give the rest of us a few minutes to catch up with where you're at, that would be great. Um, and then we could maybe... Uh, also comment, but uh, no, I, I we'll, we'll pass it over to uh, Mr. Demaray in just a second. But before we do that, Senator Lyons, your hand is up. Uh, Senator Chittenden asked the question I was going to ask. Of course, First good old Chittenden one, County. On the, on the fourth bullet. But yeah. then the other other thing is um, that a couple of things. One, where it says like those in Chittenden County, it, it yeah. just that sentence, we might want to just re restructure it a little bit because it's and, but then your comment about if there are any concerns about this, then we can put that in the letter. I mean, Absolutely. I guess, I guess what I would like to see is that, it, should we decide on this, that 
we be um, <laughs> that we suggest that this is it. This is as far, for me. This is as far as we should be going on this issue, and we would certainly um, request that no changes be made in Senate finance. I, I don't know how to say that without upsetting their apple cart because that's their job. Right. No, I understand. I, I think what I'm thinking is if, for example, and I'm not saying he's going to have a concern, but if Senator Terenzini, for example, might have a different position, I want just to make sure that that voice is also there yeah. uh, in some way. We either either he would draft something or we might we might get to something where we we, we just might be able to I don't want to lose somebody's voice if they're they're you know, opposed to it, or, or they want to raise something. And it might be just a way to, uh, you know, maybe it's Senator Terrence, and we would just work with Ledge Council to make certain that, you know, he can weigh in in that way. Does that make sense, Senator Lyons? Absolutely. Okay, Senator yeah, Terrence. No, I heard you say that, and I agree with that 100%. I uh, just want to make sure that we as a yeah. committee are fully behind whatever it is we send. Right, yeah. Senator Terrence, Yeah, thank you. I, I just... Uh, Really quick, I'm not opposed to the waiting study, the con the, the concept, the ELL, yep. all that. It's just a, it's a sensitive in my district based on some of the weight changes that are occurring uh, with certain in school districts, which are going to be, you know, there's one that could be 13 to 15 percent increase uh, if this is in place. So that's why I'm asking these questions, and and you know, I'll leave it at that for now. Yeah, yeah, Senator Hooker. Thank you. And, and Senator Terenzini's district is also my district, and I understand his concerns because there are towns that will have an increased tax capacity and towns that will lose ta tax capacity. But I really appreciate what uh, Senator Perchlick and Senator Hardy and you have done to come to this compromise because we heard from all over the state. And, you know, we heard from those districts that have a, a large number of ELL students and districts that didn't. And it seemed to me that the weights were the way to go, the more fair way to go. So I really appreciate that. And I certainly appreciate the idea of rolling this out so that it's not impacting communities either adversely one way or the other, yeah. um, you know, too quickly. Thanks. So we'll uh, get that letter from the memo from Brad James and try to move this, you know, uh, maybe on Thursday. Um, and, you know, the other way we could do it is just we could always vote and indicate what the vote is on the letter, something like that. All sorts of different ways to do it. And then finance will take our work and um, deal with it uh, accordingly. But uh, Senator Hooker, I, you, I appreciate you mentioning me in, in your thank yous, but really this is Senator Perchlick and Senator Hardy. They really uh, spent an incredible amount of time and energy on trying to find a, a, a path forward, one that is going to meet with, um, I think the approval of most people, if not everyone. So I just wanna recognize their work. Yeah, Senator Hooker, are you gonna say you didn't recognize me? Go ahead. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I recognize you, Senator, always. But um, I just want to say that this, I hope, is is future looking, forward looking. I'm hoping, or I'm, I'm assuming, with yeah. um, our take on, you know, in welcoming new Americans to our state, that yeah. there are going to be people all over the state who are in need of these services and. Yeah. That's where we're going. I hope. Yeah, no, it's it's a great point, and it's and it's an exciting time, without a doubt. Like you said, you know, people from all over the world coming to to Vermont. Uh, Mr. Demaray, uh, if you would just take us through this draft. Sure. So, for the record, uh, Jim Demaray, Les Constable. Uh, this is a memorandum from your committee to the uh, Committee on Finance. Um, and it um, reads, uh, we are writing to make the following ELL recommendation for your consideration. There are four points here. First, uh, use a 2.49 pupil weight for all ELL students in all school districts. Uh, second, provide uh, many grants in the $25,000 to $50,000 range uh, to school districts with 25 or fewer ELL students in addition to the weight, to ensure that they have sufficient resources to hire at least a part-time ELL teacher. 
Uh, third, add, add two full-time positions at the agency to provide school districts with EOL program support and guidance. Four, provide guidance, guidelines, support, and basic program requirements for EOL programs to ensure that all school districts are operating high quality programs for EOL students. And then it goes on to say that we believe that this recommendation would uh, provide school districts with large numbers of EOL students, like those in Chittenden County, with increased uh, resources, tax capacity, and funding flexibility to the full EOL weight. Uh, ensure that school districts with very few eligible students would still be able to fund strong EOL programs, enable guide, guidance and accountability measures to ensure that all school districts are adequately funded and maintain and uh, maintaining strong EOL programs and bolster the agency of education's capacity to support school districts with varying size EOL programs. And then lastly, it just says, thank you for considering our recommendation. We'd be pleased to discuss it with you and provide you with really a policy language if needed. That's it. Great, and Senator Chittenden, you raised uh, the second part, the fourth one, correct? Bolster the, was that uh, what you- The one that says provide guidelines, support and basic program requirements. Right. I'm not against that language. I just wonder if that's really in the finance jurisdiction domain or if it's still sort of within uh, us and Senate Ed to, to look into that. Yeah, issue. I would say it's, 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 it's in our, our jurisdiction. Um, yeah, I would also argue that, um, bolstering the agency of AOE's capacity to support school districts. The last one is also in our jurisdiction. Uh, I'm not saying we can't put something there, but that's where we, for example, are gonna put money in the budget or propose money in the budget for ELL supports, Jim. And that way we uh, sort of don't overlap um, work, if you will. Yeah, Senator Perslick. Um, uh, yeah, we have this, 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 Letter talks about the two FTEs, so that I would think would be something in the budget. But I hope mm -hmm. we don't put the mini grants, as they're called here, in the budget, in, in that it's instead part of the education fund, kind of like as we propose the categorical grants. Because if they're in the budget, then they can be easily just not understood and, and moved around, which is one of the concerns about doing categorical grants. So I'd want to hold on the principle that I told people that we wouldn't do with if we didn't do weights and did grants that we wouldn't make it just a budgetizing item that we'd make it uh, something that just is folded into the education fund. That makes sense. Yeah, um, I'm not sure I follow 100%. I'm sorry. So, so the, the grants, instead of making it a budget item, yeah, know, like that appropriations deal with that we it's something Brad James would do is like how many students, how many LL students you have, you have 10 yep. Okay, yep. education fund needs to pay you X dollars. And then the education fund just is increased by that amount. It's not a separate line item uh, that, uh, that appropriations debates. It's just a formula in yep. the, in the education formula, basically. So that, that so go ahead. So, Senator Lyons. Yeah. yeah. This is a Brad James question, maybe, but when are the number of ELL students um, determined? Trying to. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know. It's a good to... question. Yeah, what's the flexibility? I'm trying to remember how all that goes. But yeah, by, I, agree with, I agree with what you're saying. I just I think it's a good thought. Yeah. Jim knows the answer. Jim, do you I know? Believe, I believe the secretary today determines uh, these weights on December first of okay. each year, and, the, and then they get they get sent out to school districts in draft, and they're the finalized, I believe, by December fifteenth. Okay. Okay. In terms of the appropriation process, what I would recommend doing for this, um, not the weight, but for the the uh, dollars going out, just Adding, adding it to the appropriation for education spending. So 
if you add there, then it's just part of the big number that goes out to school districts. Therefore, it wouldn't be a separate item on the budget. Yeah, yeah. Looks like everybody's in agreement with that. Um, anything else? So, and Jim, you know, I might work with you a little bit just on some of the language, some uh, some of the wording. I, I'm just trying to think if, um, but but overall, no. I think this is I think this is good. I think it gives them the direction they need. Um, again, it's it's not uh, it's not a bill. It's 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 really just helping them take the next step in their work. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. I just mentioned on that fourth bullet point about guidelines. Yeah. Um, I would know what has to be in a ELL program. So I'm. A, I was saying in terms of drafting that those guidelines, I think I would certainly need input from, from you and maybe from people in the field as to what should be required in that program. Sure, sure. Uh, as we move forward with that work. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be some work that, you know, we might do, but it's, this is the kind of work that we would ask members of the AOE to do, new members of AOE to do, uh, really with our direction. I mean, you know, in terms of the, the positions themselves, I don't see this committee, you know, batting this kind of stuff around per se, just at pushing this to be in the budget, if that makes, you know, making sure those appointments are in the budget and then leaving that kind of work up to those new appointments. Senator Perchlick. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing chair that really the fourth bullet point could be part of the third bullet point because it's really about the i think of it as the agency of education yeah doing those like getting new positions that are focused on it and providing this guideline support and requirements for the schools and i'm happy to talk about what those are i, I don't have the expertise either but my hope would be that aoe would have that or would gain it and help the schools with that yeah Pulling it that, yeah. And I like the idea of uh, combining four and three more than just with the conjunction there, but actually having three bullet points instead of four. Center Alliance. So I'm wondering if we should have a conversation with AOE about some of the um, guidelines or just to hear the thoughts. Is there is there any legislative direction that we would want to give or we want to hear from them have them bring in a template i i know this does yeah. get a little bit complicated so i have said we have secretary french coming in this week to talk about staffing in general and this is I, I think this falls in there uh unless someone disagrees but given that we're hoping we i think we've identified staffing shortages in general in in aoe uh, i want to hear secretary french respond to that um, and we can can raise some of these things during that time. Also, if you think that's a appropriate time to do it, Center Alliance. That that will be completely up to you, <laughs> Mr. It's great with me. Yeah, good. Well, I'll support okay. you on that. Okay. Anything else right now, Senator Perchlick? You're okay. Okay, others. Looking around, all right. So uh, I've asked Daphne to, uh, Jim. Just a suggestion. Uh, there's nothing in statute today that defines services required to be delivered for EOL. There's nothing at all. So one approach may be to put some statutory language in, like high level, this is the minimum that's required, and then ask AOE to develop that further by rule or by guidance. Yeah. OK. Senator Perslick, yep. I think the schools that I'm assuming that the schools that receive the federal funding, which I know aren't all the schools that have ELL students, but I'm assuming the federal funds come with federal guidelines. So maybe that what the feds are requiring is a minimum, but maybe that's something we would. That's a really great point. Yes. We, we did. We did hear that that was pretty much a minimum, I think, when we heard testimony. So we would want to say at least or something. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, could you get that language to us? Yeah, I, I, I can. The, the federal requirements. Yeah, I yeah can the federal it. requirements. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
I just like to see them again if in case. Of Do we want to put anything in he, somewhere? <clears throat> Not necessarily in this bill, but it could be in our miscellaneous. Uh, it could be somewhere. That's all. I'm just saying where. Yeah. Would we put um, an assessment of best management pra best practices that that currently there are schools that are have robust ELL programs and the AOE might want to coordinate with one or more of those districts to determine and make a recommendation about best practices? Is this, is it, should we be doing that now or should we allow for a period of time? No, I, I like the, I, I like your thinking a lot. It's, um, and maybe again, I think this is so I would think that it would be one of the first things that somebody new in the agency would want to take on exactly what you're talking about. You know, what, what's the best work being done out there? Do we have models that we could, could share? Just like a, a lot of the other work that I think comes before our committee with literacy and, and other things. And I would say, Senator Lyons, uh, you know, in terms of the way you're thinking about this, it's really interesting. I like it because it, it also may, we may find, or a future education committee may find that, you know, we, they create something similar to what we've done with literacy. You know, again, finding, finding where the best is, bringing people in, really working on training, things like that. Um, and I think we start it in part by making certain that the agency is staffed up enough to, to do it. And that when we ask for somebody to come in, they don't send us just a care list. So much well, as we, and then, then we that like it Jess, becomes but. a part of the, the responsibility for the position that's yeah. there. Um, yeah, I think that's really important. Yeah, I think it's a great point. Um, anything else? Jim, we're, we'll, uh, Daphne's going to send that memo around. Uh, we'll take a look at another, uh, if you wouldn't mind, maybe just emailing us. A, a, a new version of this, and then we can have a, a look. Um, I don't want to fiddle too much, if you know what I mean. I want to give people some time and some space to make sure they're comfortable with it. Um, but as was pointed out, we've taken a lot of testimony on this, and we want to give uh, finance, you know, the, the space they need and the time they need to to get to complete the work. So the, I, think, I believe the edits that you want are to combine uh, points three and four um, about the. Um, agency's positions and the guidelines combine those two things together and delete the reference to Chittenden County. Is that basically where you are? Just looking through. Bolstering the agency's capacity. I'm just wondering if Chittenden County is a red flag for some people. Provide school districts. Um, no. Yeah, I think why it, it it just doesn't seem everybody knows, right? I I'd, I'd remove it. Yeah, uh, people know where there are large numbers of ELL students. There are other areas with increased. Re yeah, I think it's a good idea to remove it. Yeah, and then if you send it around, uh, maybe we can just do a little, uh, I'll take a look at it and see if there's any any other additional edits. And we'll probably have you back in, Jim, Thursday just to final it, finalize it and get it down there. Okay, yep. Okay, is that okay? Yep. Anything else on this? Okay, just looking around. Okay, uh, thanks, Jim. Yep.